And welcome to this week's Coverage in Coffee with Jason Biddish from Bars Insurance right here in Titusville. How are you this week? Great, Luke. How are you doing? I am wonderful. What, awesome. What are you going to educate us with today? Uh, this week, I'm going to educate you with a couple auto insurance myths and a couple different ways to save on your auto insurance. Oh. Yeah. So let's get rid of the myths now, and okay. then we can talk about how you can save some money. All right. First off, color does not matter. I get people all the time that say, well, if the car is red, is that going to cost more money? No, just because cops are looking for a red car street <laughs> flying down the road does not mean insurance companies care. We are colorblind when it comes to the color of your car. <laughs> Very good. Yes. The next one is I get a lot of people, whenever I quote their insurance, if they've had comp claims, and sometimes maybe I don't write the policy because my rate is higher, and that's sometimes because they did have a comp claim. So. A couple years ago, I was going to the big um, four-chamber mixer up at um, up at Cross Creek, and I hit a deer, and mm -hmm. it totaled my car. And with it totaling my car, the claim came to around eleven to twelve thousand dollars. Wow! My rate did not go up, and that's because I stayed with the same company. So, if I looked around at another insurance company they would have probably instead of put me in the highest tier for the best rates they might have dropped me down a couple pegs because of that because if you're an insurance company you'd probably be looking at me saying whoa 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 a claim was still paid out and that ain't no you backed into a light pole you hit uh, which I did hit an eight point buck and again it was eleven thousand dollar claim and if you were an insurance company you would probably look at that too and say whoa 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 we might not want to give them the absolute best rate mm. okay and the other one that um, I want to talk about is people sometimes think that just if they don't have the newest car that their rates aren't going to go up D does that make sense to you yeah yeah if you have like just because it's a 2013 doesn't mean your rate is going to go up the rate is your rate for your comp and collision, which is where most of your premium comes from. Whenever I talk about raising your liability limits and raising your first party medical benefits and your uninsured, underinsured, those rates compare nothing to the rates of comp and collision coverage. And it's all based off of a little number that goes between one to the mid 20s for the cars that you, you and I would drive, Luke, or and all of you out there in TV land would be driving. And the, again, the higher the number, the higher the premium is going to be. And so that symbol, that insurance symbol for the vehicle, again, the higher it is, the more expensive it's going to be, is based off of how expensive is it going to going to be to fix this car, and also how easily is this car going to be totaled. Do you know anything about uh, cars being totaled? Ah, uh, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Well, when, you to when a vehicle is totaled, there's no gray area, there's no talking to the claims adjuster saying, please, 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 please don't total my car. Your vehicle, if whatever your vehicle value is, if the claim is 70% of that claim, it's a total loss. There's no going back on it, there's no, oh, well, I could shave a little off here. Mm -hmm. Once it hits 70%, you have an R title vehicle, which means it's worth next to nothing. Your options after that are get the check from the insurance company for it and deal with it, or keep an R-Title vehicle, which good luck trading in. Wow. Okay. Now, most vehicles that I see, uh, the higher numbered ones are between 17 and about 21. You're going to see those in a lot of um, entry-level vehicles like the Neon, the Cobalt, um, the Sunfire, the Cavalier, things like that. And we you know how everybody jokes around that once you drive a vehicle off the lot, it's worth about 50% of what it was before. Hmm. Well, say, and it's, it's a true statement that once you drive off the lot, your car isn't as worth as much. So take a lower valued vehicle like a Neon. And it's a good, my brother's had one for 10 years. He loves it. I had a Cavalier. I had a, I had a great experience with it. But the cash value, which is what we're looking at, is going to be um, 
a lot lower so it's going to be easier to total so those those lower entry level vehicles are actually having a higher symbol which is going to cost a lot more in in coverage i had a client that had a cobalt they loved it but it was costing them i think of their total premium about nine hundred dollars of their premium Holy was God. coming just out of their comp and collision because the symbol on it is so high now, when, when people uh, pick up the trade magazines to see safety ratings of vehicles, th any of that play a factor? That does go into play. That does okay. go into play. It's, uh, car insurance rates are huge, nerdy equations. To, to tell you every single factor, I, it would, yeah, yeah I, I'd pass out. It, it, <laughs> it, it'd be ridiculous. Um, but that being said, call your agent and say hey i'm looking at these couple cars how is this go how is this going to change my premium i see every insurance agent now getting mad at me saying thanks for having my client call me about three cars to take a look at yeah. for them but it's the smartest move for you as a client because you want to make sure that you're not putting yourself into a car that you can't afford even on the insurance side of it because again those lower entry less expensive vehicles are a lot more uh, expensive to insure so taking a look at, before you go and purchase a vehicle, taking a look at certain models, maybe even bouncing some ideas off of you before they make a purchase. Yes, and I have a lot of clients that do that because it makes a lot more sense. I mean, if, if you're right at the cusp of a car payment and then you add on an insurance payment to that, which a lot of times people forget about because we're the most exciting people in the world, well. um, People don't people forget about that and then whenever they come come to me or whoever and they can't afford the insurance Maybe they should have taken a look at a couple different cars first to make sure that they can afford the insurance on it Now let's go over some ways to save some money. Okay, okay. First off home and auto discount home and auto discount perfect way to save money put your home and auto Together you're gonna be loyal to the company. They'll be loyal to you by giving you 10 20 percent off or whatever perfect way to do it okay sometimes it doesn't work out I'm an independent agent I, I, I handle 20 different companies so sometimes I've noticed people where the home and auto discount didn't work out for them but I could put their home somewhere else and save them a heck of a lot more money than their discount but that's a great way to start is on that another way to start if you're over 55 take a defensive driving course they're available all over the place can give you five to ten percent off again depending on the company every company is different whenever they on bells and whistles there are a lot every company is different in that respect so if you're over 55 you want to save some money take a defensive driving course um, another way to save money raise your deductible if you've had a clean driving record for a while, which by the way, that's another good way to keep your rates down. Don't drive like an idiot. I don't know how else to well. say it. <laughs> I know that's a little off color, but the reason why I say that is how many times has somebody passed you up on an icy road? You oh know? yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Especially whenever with it being winter right now, you don't want to just, you, you know, just be safe out there. There's so many accidents to begin with. You don't want to be part of another one. But that's going to help keep your rates down too. And sometimes people sometimes conveniently forget about their about wrecks that they had three or four years ago. Um, another way to save money, EFT. Do you know what that is, Luke? Uh, EFT. I have uh, EFT Classic and right. EFT3. And sometimes I'll watch uh, you know College Ball on... Uh, oh, I love college ball on EFT. Yeah. Yeah. EFTU, isn't it? Is that I, that I that think is? that's what that that's is. What that is. Yeah, EFT that's what that U, is, EFTU, yes. That's on the premier package, I <laughs> think, for right. Comcast. Yeah. Um, what EFT is, is electronic funds transfer. This is a great way to pay your bill, and it saves you money. A lot of times when insurance companies put their... In, um, put their um, commercials out there, they never talk to you about the fact that whenever you're on their billing plans, that if you don't go EFT, you're gonna get charged between five and seven dollars just for them to send you a bill oh, to wow. send you them money back. So if you're on, let's say a 10 pay plan, okay, so on a 10 pay plan, you which is, uh, which is the average uh, plan out there if you're not on EFT so you can make monthly payments, you have your down payment, of whatever it is, sometimes 20%, mm -hmm. and then you make nine payments and then you get two months off, which is convenient for a lot of people. 
but nine times five is forty-five dollars. That's forty-five dollars you're giving to an insurance company to pay them money. Don't do that. Go on EFT. Some companies do have a little extra charge of maybe a dollar, but what's nice about EFT, you know when it's coming out, you know you're not going to be late. As long as you have the money in the bank, you're totally fine. And sometimes EFT can lower your rate and put you on a true 12 months. So sometimes when uh, people out there, whenever they do go on a 10 pay plan and they have to hand me a check for let's say 20, 25% down, it's a one month payment. So your down payment oh, wow. is actually your first month's payment. It's a lot easier to work with and you know exactly what your bill is gonna be every month instead of, well I had two months off but then I think I owe the big one here and then how much is this one gonna be? EFT comes right out of your checking account, same day, every month, unless it's a holiday or Sunday or the weekend and you know exactly how much is coming out. It's so nice to work with. I do it, I love it, I know what's coming out of my account. Another great way if for kids are grades. Just get oh. good grades. Study up students because... The so obviously you were talking college kids. Oh, yes, I was talking college yeah. kids. And, and, you know, we'll throw high school students in there too because if oh, high school right. students are on their parents' policy, a good way to keep the rate down, even if it's a little bit, it could shave 50 bucks a year off the policy, but having younger kids off or having younger kids on your policy is going to raise your rate a nice way to um, lower that rate is by getting good grades and then just giving your agent your report card hmm. that's really about it it's pretty and simple also younger kids um, if you know you turn 16 you're so excited about getting on the open road and driving a really sweet car because you saw somebody like on television whenever they turn 16 get a really sweet car yeah you're 16 you just got your license every every car you look at is expensive because of the comp and collision which we talked about before save your parents money and headache by going to a local used car dealer and just getting an old Beretta <laughs> or a, or a or a Cavalier or whatever that your parents or you aren't going to have to have comp and collision on this okay again as i said before comp and collision are the most expensive parts of your policy now imagine how expensive it's going to be when you have no driving experience it's going to go way up uh, a kid called me once a couple years ago he wanted he just got his license or had it for one year and he wanted a 2002 Mitsubishi Eclipse. Ooh. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Uh, uh, for me, it was like cha-ching, cha-ching. But when I called him back and said his premium was $6,000 a year, he was like, why is that? And I had to explain to him what I just explained to you. You have no driving experience, and you want to drive a very fast car yeah. all over the place. And, hey, one more quick myth before we go. Oh, did you have questions, Luke? I, I, go ahead. Okay. One more quick myth. Your rate does not go down when you turn 25. Oh, really? It does not. The reason why everybody thinks that your rate goes down when you're 25 is because the average person gets their license when they're 16. Well, insurance rates aren't based off of what age you are. They're based off, uh, part of the rate is based off of your driving experience. So if you have one month of driving experience, you're going to pay a lot more than somebody with a lot more driving experience. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, insurance rate de decreases were based off of seven to nine years driving experience. So 16 plus nine is 25, which is where a lot of insurance companies lowered their rates was with nine years driving experience because you knew the road a lot better. You knew how to handle yourself in a car. So nine years driving experience, when people turn 25, they thought that that's when their rate went down. It was because of the years of experience. Because if you got your license at 24, you're not gonna get a good rate when you turn 25. That doesn't make sense. Driver's training, high school, does that help? Yes, thank you, Luke. Uh, driver's training, another big help. One, just to learn how to be a better driver and a good driver, but also that is another great way to save money on your auto insurance when you first get your license. Sounds like some great ways. Some great easy ways, and again, every company is different, so you might want to talk to your agent of different ways that they can save money on their premiums. All right. Now, if they want to talk to you, set up a meeting, go over their policy or their current plans, how can they get a hold of you? Well, they can head down to the park building. I'm right beside Edward Jones or across from the YMCA. 
My number is 827-7767. And we got a website too, barsinsurance.com. All right. This has been Coverage and Coffee with Jason Biddish from Bars Insurance. Jason, thank you so much. Thanks, Luke.